Well, hello, friends. I hope you're having a great day today. Welcome to Tuesday's edition of Take 5. We're breaking down the message that I preached Sunday that we entitled Victory Over the Sin Nature. I think this is a very important subject, quite possibly the most important that I, one that I'll preach uh, this year because it deals with something that I believe the majority of Christians struggle with, and that is understanding the power that Christ made available to them over the sin nature. Now, we have already studied that in dying, Jesus paid the penalty for our sin, but in rising again, he broke the power of sin, not just in the future when we'll all be raised up at the rapture, especially if uh, you know, you're dead in Christ, you'll be raised, and if you're living, you'll be raptured up. But, but it's not just victory that we have then. There's power over sin available to us now, all throughout this life. And I believe it's something that Christians maybe aren't aware of. Maybe we haven't been taught. I know in my life, I, I was never taught uh, this. You know, they, did, they didn't teach us things like this. They didn't explain that to us. It was just, you know, you had to pray enough. You had to fast enough. You had to go to the right services and get anointed enough and that type of thing. And I'm not against any of that. Please don't get me wrong. But you have to put God's word uh, to work. Uh, you have to appropriate it by faith. And to do that, you have to know it. And you have to understand it. And that's part of my job is to teach the body of Christ uh, that Jesus called us out of the grave of sin, just like he did Lazarus. But my job is to teach you so that you can be free from sin. Do what uh, Jesus told those people around Lazarus, loose him and let him go. That's my job to do that. Now, the sin nature, I want you to get familiar with it and understand it. That's that Adam-like nature that every person is born with. Uh, that since the original sin of Adam and Eve, Romans 5 teaches us it passed on to everyone. Everybody's born with it. That's why you have to be born again. It's that, that bent of every human being towards sin that everyone has. Uh, and, and we struggle with it even after we are saved because we're tempted to sin. We want to sin. And, and let's face it, we do sin even after we're saved. The fact is, we don't have to be bound by sin. There are entirely too many people that are born again. They're aware to a degree that the penalty for their sin has been paid, but they feel like that they've got to go on the rest of their life and struggle with that thing that they used to be, and you just absolutely do not. Jesus made it possible for us to be free from that. I want to read a passage of Scripture in Ephesians and then tomorrow we're going to read one from Romans and these two are going to come together and each one of them tells us the same thing but tells us something a little different at the same time, revealing to us where we really are now that we are saved and in Jesus Christ and the victory that we should walk in over sin. So let me read Ephesians chapter 2, 1 through 7. Listen to this. Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins. Okay, we get that, right? You used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. And by that very sinful nature, we were also subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. But now this is what he did for us. Uh, when we were lost, this is what he did for us. But God is so rich in mercy, and he loved us so much that even when we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised Christ from the dead. So already you can see the picture uh, that's stating that when Jesus died, our sin nature died with him. When we put faith in Christ, that sin nature dies with him. And when Jesus was raised, we were raised with him. Verse six said, he raised us from the dead along with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms because we are united with Christ Jesus. Now, 
Notice that he raised us with Christ and seated us in him, with him in heavenly realms. Now, where is Jesus seated at? All you've got to do is back up one chapter to Ephesians 1, and he tells us where Jesus is seated at because Paul tells us there that when God raised Jesus, Jesus has been seated at the right hand of the Father far above. Here's the, here's the one we need to grasp. He's seated far above all principality and power and dominion and might. He's seated far above all of that. Well, now, wait a minute. I just read from chapter two that since we have gotten saved, that God raised us up in Jesus and seated us in Jesus and with Jesus. And that means that now we are far above all principality and power and might and dominion. Do you see the picture there, friend? We're not still wallowing around down here in sin. We're not still at a place where sin can hold us and bind us and grab us and catch us and pull us down. We are free. The Bible said, he whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We are free from the power of sin. In fact, we are seated far above it. So if we could just see that picture today, being in Christ, having died with him and being raised with him and seated with him in him, we are far above all of that in this world that wants to bind us and hold us and keep us from being everything that God intends for us to be. The seventh verse says, so God, God did all of this so that he can point to us in all the future ages as an example of the incredible wealth of his grace and kindness toward us as shown in all that he's done for us who are united with Jesus Christ. Christ. Man, that is a great thought right there to know that what we actually are is a trophy of God's grace. And guess who's supposed to see the trophy? The people that are around us. Because when the people around us see that we are saved and see that we are not who we used to be and we are not bound and tied to the things that we used to do and, and we don't go to the places that we used to go and we're not the same person because we've been changed and we're free from that old nature. When they see that, they see the victory that God has wrought for us, in us, through Jesus Christ, and it tells of the goodness of God, and it's a testimony to them that he will do the same thing for them if they'll just put their faith in the complete work of Jesus, which is this, he paid our penalty and he freed us from the power of sin when God seated us in him far above all principality, power, dominion, and might. Hey, I've got to get out of here. It's been good being with you today. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Wednesday's edition of Take 5. Till then, God bless you. Have a great day. Hey, trust the Lord, friend. He will never fail you.